Hey guys, we are back and things are really starting to heat up in the crypto market. We now could be just two short weeks away until crypto finally breaks through and this whole market begins setting new all-time highs. Now, if you missed my last video, I urge you to give that one a watch as it fully explains why November is the big month for this entire four-year cycle. And as for this video, as always, we'll be taking a look at how this bull market is progressing, including the key things going on with price right now and the key levels to watch. Then looks like October has just flipped green. How high could things be going this month? And then we'll finish with the biggest developments from all around the world in just the past couple of weeks. Okay, so first up, let's check in with the latest price action and see what are the key levels to watch. Okay, jumping in as always with the Bitcoin chart as it is pretty much the index for the entire market. And we know if Bitcoin is crashing, then altcoins will be crashing as well. If Bitcoin rallies, altcoins typically rally as well. So what is going on with Bitcoin? Well, it's no surprise that we've had these many, many months of consolidation as it broke through the previous all time high, but because it did it before the last halving, which was a anomaly, it's not been able to hold it. Now, when it comes to key price levels, for me, there's really only one, and that would be around this mark here. So this is the low that happened only two months ago, it seems like an eternity, back in August, where because of the Japanese yen carry trade, do you remember that? We had a leverage flush out, taking Bitcoin to about $50,000. So this is the key line in the sand, $50,000. And right now we're looking pretty strong, close to 68,000. So that would be quite a big drop from here. It would have to drop over 25% to get back to that level. So for me, unless something major happens, I would say that this is the local bottom and the bull market, the next big phase has already started but we only ever know that in hindsight. And then obviously key level to the upside would be breaking the 70,000 and then breaking new all time highs, which is around just under 74,000. But as mentioned, and I'll mention it again later in this video, I don't see this happening until November. But there's also something very interesting that's just happened with October. So flipping over to seasonality and last time we checked in only two weeks ago, October had started in the red. And since then, Bitcoin's had a nice run. It's now plus 7% and on average, it could be getting closer to 20%. So still two weeks to go, and it looks like it's pretty much doing what it normally does. When it comes to Ethereum and the altcoin market, yes, it has flipped into green territory. However, it's still pretty flat. And if you remember in my five scenario video, when we compared to 2019, which was also when the Fed began cutting rates, but we didn't yet get monetary stimulation. If you recall, October was pretty flat, which is concerning for what's going on right now. And then we did get a negative November and December. So question is, which one is more powerful? Monetary policy, the US election, or it being a halving year? Again, it's all pretty much lining up for next month.
Now, just checking in with the four year cycle and a couple of things to point out here. Firstly, when we were talking about it back here, we were saying that this cycle in red really shouldn't be above the previous cycles. And at some point it has to come back down below. Well, we've finally now broken through into the clearing and we have this nice trend for the last part of the cycle. And the recurring theme of this video for me again is the US election. I think that is going to determine what kind of curve that we get. If Donald Pump gets in, I can see us racing up and joining the club up here. If Kamala gets in, I could definitely see an initial drop as it would certainly suck. But then ultimately, I think there'd be a rebound and I think the angle would just be a little bit more different. I have mentioned a couple of times, I think the curve ultimately peaks out this time around about a 10x, which is a Bitcoin price of about $150,000. However, what's niggling on my mind is why plan B is so confident that it's going to end up around $500,000, breaking this diminishing returns. So that works out to be about a 30X from the bottoms. This is your 5X, this is a 10X. I thought best case scenario might be 15, but to get to 500,000, then Bitcoin would have to be getting to a 30 x and this means exponential gains breaking above what happened in the previous cycle so remains to be seen that really would be one hell of a move to be able to get there in just next year alone but for this video again the main thing for the next couple of weeks i can see us either just consolidating up and down up and down sideways maybe going up a little bit and then the election is really going to determine whether it shoots up early maybe we get another early peak it has to come back down before regaining its ultimate top or if it's harris i can see an initial drop and then probably just a different kind of curve. So that would be my guess on what's coming over the next month. And then the developments just keep coming in thick and fast. There's been quite a few, so let me quickly go through these. First is that we've now had a couple of XRP ETF filings. So there's been some great developments for all the people in XRP. So congratulations to all the holders. Then just yesterday, if you didn't know, Grayscale has a multi-token fund that they're also trying to turn into an ETF. So this really would be like the market's first index fund. You would hold a percentage of Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, XRP, and Avalanche. I think moving forward over the next several years, index fund investing into crypto is probably going to be a good thing to do. We had the United Arab Emirates saying they're going to exempt crypto transfers and conversion from VAT tax. I think in the US, this is sales tax. So UAE lowering taxes on crypto, good to see. Also in the UAE, the central bank has just given the green light to their own stablecoin in their own currency. So clearly the UAE, United Arab Emirates are really pushing crypto adoption, great to see. Then we had Uniswap and they just revealed their plans to launch an Ethereum layer two called Unichain. So this is great to see as Uniswap is a decentralized exchange running on Ethereum and they're now going to make it super fast and super cheap by creating a layer two. And they've decided to use Optimism. This is also great to see for me as I am an Optimism holder. 
we're starting to see other publicly listed companies, this time Samara Asset Group, creating a bond to buy Bitcoin. And it's clearly worked for Michael Saylor. In fact, MicroStrategy is the number one stock out of any S&P 500 company. So they've outperformed every single company in the S&P 500, which is incredible. And now other companies are wanting a slice of the pie as well. And as more people do it, then more people will do it. Driving price up, then more people do it. So this again, great to see. We had Donald Trump launch his own crypto token, which is unprecedented. And the company behind it is World Liberty and they're launching on Aave. Again, massive news for Ethereum. And just on a side note for Ethereum, have you noticed that all the small retail investors are all bagging on Ethereum, yet all the monster companies and people like Donald Trump and BlackRock are all fans of Ethereum. So you need to decide who is correct. Now, Deutsche Bank is another massive bank and they've set up with Keyrock to do cross-currency operations. So whenever I see banks getting involved, this is great and massive for the industry. And then finally, for me, this probably was the news of the week. Again, you saw the quick couple of minute presentation from BlackRock in my last video, but basically all it was saying is that crypto is growing faster than not only the internet did, and obviously the internet was a big thing, right? But it's also growing faster than mobile phones. And as we all know, pretty much everyone has a mobile phone now in their hand. And this wasn't just a chart by anyone, this is BlackRock, the world's most successful money manager, pointing out that crypto is growing faster than these megatrends. So clearly the news of the week for me, and ultimately why crypto is probably going to be successful, regardless who is president next year. things are really starting to heat up in the crypto market. The key level to watch to the downside is $50,000 set back in August. And unless something really bad happens, I think that was the bottom in this big consolidation. October has also flipped back into positive territory and we still have two weeks. And so a lot can still happen. Bitcoin has now broken into the clearing for its own four year cycle. And for me, it's all about the US election as to which direction it's going to take to the mountain top. And as you saw, the developments for crypto just keep coming in thick and fast. This week, we had BlackRock, the world's largest money manager, giving presentations saying that crypto is growing faster than not only the internet, but also cell phones. However, the big one for me is that it all depends on the US election for crypto's next six months. Honestly, nothing else really matters right now. While you wait, feel free to join people gambling on meme coins if that's your thing. But for now, if you've got any questions or comments, then post them below. However, just remember to get rid of 100% of the comment spam and trading bots that plague you YouTube comments, we are trying out the new Super Thanks commenting system. So to get your question or comment read and replied to, or just to say thanks, then use Super Thanks below. And for now, just to say, if you did enjoy anything in the video, then drop a like and a big thank you to everyone who does, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.